Proxmox has recently announced a new feature that allows for easy migration of VMware ESXi VMs from an existing VMware hypervisor to Proxmox. That's a lot easier than the old way of doing it. Today I'm going to take a look at that new functionality, try out the wizard and move a few VMs, try to push it to the limits and see if I can find any potential issues or problems you might run into in your own migrations, and go over some of my thoughts on the whole migration process. Let's first take a look at Proxmox's announcement and a little bit of the details about this tool. So Proxmox announced this feature on their forums here, which went over a little bit of information and some Q&As. They also have more detailed documentation on their Proxmox wiki if you want to read through all their details, and have also gone through and updated the guide, but I like to try this out for myself. For my own testing, I set up a VMware ESXi version 8 box with a couple of different VMs to try migration on. And then I also have a Proxmox test system that has a fully up-to-date version of Proxmox. Since this feature is new, you're going to have to do a full update of your system to make sure you have this feature. If you're watching this video in the future, it'll likely come on the ISO images and come pre-installed, but just for now, you want to take your system, go on the system itself you're using, go under updates, and do a refresh to check for all the new possible packages, and then do an upgrade to upgrade to the latest version of all the packages on your Proxmox system. And if this is succeeded, you'll likely see a new version number here. It looks like 8.1.8 .8 or newer should be fine. So this is 8.1.10. And the other way to see that it's actually correctly been added is to go under data center and then storage and then going under add. And this is where you're going to see the fact that they added it here. There's a new type of storage on Proxmox, which is called ESXi. And this is where you can go add your ESXi server to Proxmox. So the simple version of how this process works is you add your ESXi server to Proxmox, it adds it as a data store, and then using some of the ESXi APIs, it's able to read all the VMs on the ESXi host, information about the VMs like the amount of RAM, the cores, and some other configuration about the VMs. And then it's also able to use a little import utility to pull all that data into a Proxmox VM, making it nearly a one-step install process of moving your existing ESXi VMs to Proxmox. But they often have some issues, so I want to see how it goes for myself. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go just click on ESXi, and I'm just going to type in a name. So in this case, it's going to be ESXi test for me. I'm going to type in the IP address of my ESXi test box that I set up in this case. And then I'm going to put in the username and password for this system. I'm also going to click skip certificate version because I'm using self-signed certificates for everything and it's not trusted. But now that it's been added, I can see ESXi test has popped up on the left for my system right here. And I can click on it and I can see all of these virtual guests here with this VMX format. And if I go take a look at the management page on my ESXi system, I can see it has all the same names and types of VMs that my ESXi system has. And this storage type is a little bit different than all the other storage types in Proxmox where you can't add any storage, you couldn't store backups or VMs or anything. All you can do is click on a VM you want to import, click on import, and then I get a little utility that lets me set the new VM ID in Proxmox, some information like sockets, cores, where I want to put the storage on the new system, and a few more configuration details about this new VM it's going to do. It tries to copy this from the existing ESXi VM, but it's not perfect and it shows some errors here like EFI state can't be configured. So this means things like EFI boot order might be changed and you might have to poke with that. Um, some CD-ROM images can't be imported, so you have to reconfigure that. So that means you have to copy your ISO images over. And then it's also built without the LSI drivers, so it sets it to the vert IO SCSI single. That's going to be the other interesting thing. Whenever you're moving VMs between hypervisors, the boot drivers that are used for the main data store can be changed. And that can make a lot of OSs unhappy because they don't like to have their drivers needed for the boot disk changed without notice or any configuration. So let's see how this goes. I'm just going to click import right now. And it looks like it's transferring a little bit of data from this VM. Looks like it's a 16 gig drive. Now, when my VM is transferring, one thing I was curious about was how fast this transfer is going on. So I've actually let this VM already copy and import to my Proxmox system, and it took about eight to nine minutes over a couple of runs to import a 16 gigabyte VM, which means the average speed when importing a VM was roughly in the 300 and some megabytes per second range, which seems a bit slow because all my systems had SSDs, relatively recent processors, and was over a gigabit network. That's not optimal, but I guess it's okay for importing VMs, which is kind of a one-time task. Though they do have one thing that promises to make it a bit faster, which is a live restore, 
where the concept is you can import the VM and then immediately start running it from the imported storage without actually having to finish copying that all over. So looking at the import dialog again, I can see this live import box. Gonna just check it right now. Try it with one of these. And it says that if anything goes wrong during live import, the new data won't be written to the host. So this can definitely be dangerous, especially when you're migrating from ESXi where it's different storage under the hood, but let's see how it goes. What it should be doing right now is starting to copy and immediately booting up the VM on the VMware storage while it is copying it. And just to take a look at the Linux Mint VM I'm doing a live import on, this Linux Mint VM is booting, but extremely slow. It's still at the very beginning of its boot process. And Proxmox says it's about 40% done. It seems like it's putting a lot more IO priority on the actual moving the data than running the VM. And this seems to be almost unusably slow when it comes to importing it. So, so I finished my live migration of my Linux Mint VM and it took 27 minutes, which is a bit over three times as long as my other VMs, which had the same amount of storage space. Now it was running for quite a bit of that, but it was running so slowly and took so long to boot that it probably would have been quicker if I just did a migration and then started it up to get to the desktop. I guess it's nice to have that feature, but it seems like there's some sort of like API call limit in VMware that's single threaded that slows down the UI and really limits these IOPS, heavy IOPS processes like running a VM off of it. So while it is kind of cool, it doesn't seem that practical for a lot of uses. Could be something weird about my setup, but maybe. Let me know in the comments below if you've had better experiences doing live migration or if running these VM restorations don't slow down your UI quite a bit. Another interesting thing I've noticed is the VMware command page here seems to be extremely sluggish when I'm copying VMs. Potentially this is sharing resources with Proxmox when it's pulling those API calls and it's just really slowing down the system. Let's try migrating a running VM right now and see what happens. So if I import this Windows 10 VM right now and click import, it's actually gonna fail. I've tried this in the past and it fails with kind of an input output or error and nothing specific. I wish they'd put in an error that says we've detected the VM is running and we're not gonna try to do it rather than this slightly generic error, but it definitely won't migrate a running VMware on an ESXi host. Now what I wanna take a look at next is how well it does at copying some of the different settings between ESXi and Proxmox because a lot of the settings between any hypervisor is pretty similar, like the number of cores, the number of memory, but some things like networking can get pretty complex and I wanna see how much it can copy. So what I've done on my VMware system right now is I've set up my little Windows 10 VM. I then put a static IP on it and I've recorded the MAC address that that VM has. And I wanna see if it's able to keep the same IP address because sometimes the link between the virtual network cards and its IP addresses might change, which would mean you need more setup and configuration time when migrating. And I wanna see if it keeps the same MAC address in case you use your MAC address for some reason as part of authentication or as your DHCP lease. Taking a look at my network test VM on Proxmox now, I can see that my MAC address is the same but Windows doesn't recognize this as the same network adapter, so that means it's lost the IP address and I have to reset up my static IP on the new VM. A Little bit annoying that it can't keep it exactly the same. Making these steps automated and work automatically would be a cool extra step for this little migration tool. The next thing I wanna try is setting a lot of different settings in VMware ESXi and seeing how well those copy over. So here's my little Mint VM I did my live restore with and I'm gonna try just setting weird things on here. So first of all, let's go into CPU, set it to two cores per socket with four sockets for a total of eight. Let's turn on hot plug. We're gonna set the reservation to, in this case, 5,000 megahertz. Um, and we're gonna limit it to 10,000. So that's kind of odd. We're gonna set the high. I don't think Proxmox is gonna be able to copy this over because Proxmox doesn't do it the same way. Oh, let's try setting scheduling affinity. Let's see if it's able to copy scheduling affinity to the new system. So I'm gonna say maybe run it on just one through eight processors. Under memory, do we have any interesting options? I'm gonna say, let's actually give it low shares in this case, see if that's copied over. Um, memory, I'm gonna give it a interesting number of perhaps like three gigabytes. And maybe let's see how reservations work. If I wanna reserve a thousand, see if that's copied over. Um, and we're gonna enable hot plug too and see if that happens to be copied over. Hard disk wise, all of these hard disks I've already done migrations of, like in this 111 that I finished here, seems to be coming in as a SCSI device. 
likely because the SCSI device is relatively similar to what ESXi uses, which means you don't have any driver issues. But maybe I could change that and use a SATA controller, see if that's copied over. Let's set the IOP limit to 1,000. Um, and disk mode um, sharing, yeah. SCSI controller, we have VMware pair virtual, that's fine. I'm trying to think of anything else I could do that's real weird. Under the network settings for this VM, I'm gonna have three different network cards, one of which will be set to not connect at power on, and it's also set to use the E1000 NIC, which Proxmox also has an E1000, perhaps that's gonna be set to it. And then under video card, just to try some different settings, I gave it different amounts of video memory, and let's give it a second display just to see how Proxmox handles this. So this is a lot of kinda odd configuration, under VM options, I want to try just changing and seeing if it copies over the guest OS version. So maybe I'll change it to Windows and see how it likes having that changed on it and if that's copied. And this here looks like everything that could reasonably copy to Proxmox in these VMware settings. There's a lot more advanced parameters in VMware you can definitely set for a VM, but these are things that you might want to be able to see copied over. So I'm going to save this VM now import it into Proxmox and see what the Proxmox configuration for this weird imported VM turns out to be. So on the left I have my Proxmox import dialog and one of the cool things is it shows me the full configuration without actually having to import it. So I can just see how it's going to pull in this weird changes now. So the first thing I notice is it gets my CPU sockets and cores right and it also gets my 3 gigabytes of RAM just right. Um, the other thing is CPU type seems to always set to this new default of the x86-64 V2 AES. Looking here, VMware doesn't really have an equivalent of the generation of CPUs from what I can see right here. Though I'm not an expert in ESXi and all of its different options, I would probably change this to host. OS type and version seem pretty smart and able to read whatever it has set. And if you set ESXi to something like Windows Server 2025, which Proxmox actually doesn't have, it just sets it to the latest version of Windows, which is pretty smart. It doesn't copy over the network bridges, but it's fully different name, so I wouldn't expect it to do so. Looking under the advanced options, I can see it's making that new EFI disk, which it can't copy over, which does mean it is copying over its EFI versus legacy configuration, which is great because that makes it a lot easier. It says prepare for vertio SCSI, which by default maps it for vertio SCSI, which allows for quicker switching to the vertio and faster drivers, leaves it with an empty SATA drive. And it, look, there we go. It does it correctly, copies that E1000E from my last network, copies over all three of them, but doesn't copy the connect automatically. It just seems that it doesn't have use connect. And it does get the MAC address for the started one, but has auto for the network adapters that haven't started or had a MAC address addressed. Pretty good. Looking at the resulting config, which shows all the changes that would end up in that Proxmox configuration file, I can see a few things, boot order information, and just looking for something interesting that might give me additional information about this VM. It looks like it hasn't copied a lot of the advanced features like CPU reservations, CPU shares, priority, memory ballooning, and the minimal amount of memory, and other settings like that. And primarily it's things like your basic amount of cores, network adapters, OS types, and stuff. And this makes a lot of sense to me because things like the reservations of memory and ballooning is reasonably different that copying it over is likely not what you want. And if you're doing a weird configuration, you probably want to set it up manually on Proxmox anyways. Overall, I'd say I'm relatively impressed about it. Gets most things right and seems to have thought through getting things like UEFI Legacy for it to boot easily. And while I've tried far from every possible configuration, those few VMs I tried boot up just fine without any issues. And just out of curiosity, after finishing the import of that weird Mint VM, I can see my configuration here is just as the import wizard would say it would be, so that's nice to see. Overall, I was fairly impressed with how well this tool works. I've done a few VMware to Proxmox migrations before this tool came out, where I had to do it the old manual way of copying VMDKs over and converting them and then trying to recreate the configuration. And this tool is a lot easier to use and simplifies a lot of those simple tasks. And it's nice to not have to do another way to migrate data and move things around. And I'm pretty impressed. My biggest annoyance working with this was the speed of the transfers. It seems like it's something to do with those VMware API calls, but I'm far from an expert about what's actually going on speed wise and what would cause it to be acting slow. Moving a few small VMs is not a huge issue, but if you're moving terabytes or tens of terabytes of data, that could definitely slow things down. 
There's a few limitations when it comes to doing advanced features, likely because Proxmox and VMware don't handle a lot of those advanced configurations the same. They also say things like using vSAN configurations aren't supported, so it isn't able to move over with those VMs. But overall, I think it's a nice little tool to have, and it's great to see Proxmox take advantage of VMware getting bought up by Broadcom and increasing prices and being relatively anti-consumer in what they've done recently. I'm also kind of annoyed I can't get another new copy of this VMware ISO if I want to run the latest version of my home lab. Feels like they're going to be kind of getting rid of a generation of people who want to play with it at home and learn more about what they're using at work. I'm annoyed they got rid of the free ISO because I, probably like many others, have learned a lot from those free ISOs and trials companies like VMware give away and then use those skills to get IT jobs and do other IT tasks. And I think it's going to hurt them in the future when there's less people who are using VMware because you can't easily get it to play with in a home lab environment. One thing I see online when people talk about migrations from VMware to other solutions and like Proxmox is Proxmox is not a full replacement for VMware. There's a lot of features that VMware has that Proxmox can't do. Things like VDI if you're using that, integration with other third-party software if you have to use it, for example, Veeam doing backups. And while with those software, there might be alternatives of Proxmox or you might just not want to do it, a lot of environments I've seen are just relatively simple. I want to run a few Windows and Linux VMs. They just need basic cores and network access and nothing fancy. And in this case, Proxmox is going to work perfectly fine for those users. But it's definitely not a full replacement and VMware has a lot of cool features, which likely is why they're going to keep their big customers for a while because it isn't as easy as doing this. But for the small users with a few nodes, this tool is going to be really handy. Let me know if you have any questions or experience using these tools in the comments below, and thanks for watching this video.